is going on coastal worldwide guys welcome home blaine and myself are about to bring you guys a very exciting episode chuck full of information mm -hmm. knowledge and some lessons that we've learned and i think it's very important for you guys to watch all the way through um, we'll do more talking about what we learned and more specifically on our gear and uh, techniques you guys can take out to do this but today's episode open water yellowfin tuna the most frustrating thing you can chase but the most rewarding thing you can do when it works out yes. so kick back relax enjoy the episode you you are catching up with us 70 miles offshore on an absolute lake calm glass day and it has been pretty unreal but i don't want to waste your guys' time yeah so we got here this morning, we did a little bit of trolling for Wahoo, no luck, showed up to this fad, and there was yellow fin in the 60, 80 pound variety jumping right out of the water. We saw probably two or 300 pound blue marlin chasing mahi, smacking mahi, mm -hmm. and for the last probably four hours, we've been trying to get a blue marlin to eat. There's been yellow fin tuna busting in probably closer to the 100 pound plus variety. Yeah. Poppers, stick baits, live baits, 40 pound fluoro, 60 pound fluoro, 80 pound fluoro, 300 pound mono on the back, what, everything we have thrown the kitchen sink at these fish. Now there's still a lot of bait here, but where you guys are tuning in, we're about to head to a brand new fad. Check it out, see if there's more life there. If not, we're gonna come right back here again for the evening bites. Get in, get in, get in. Dumbs on, dumbs on, dumbs on, dumbs on, jack him, jack him, jack him, jack him, jack him. Keep jacking, keep jacking, keep jacking. He's gonna like go sporadic and go crazy. All right. Yeah, you, you foul hooked a black fin or something. Oh, you think he's, that's oh, a bobo. What is it? Bobo. Shark. Look at that shark. Grab him, Jack, grab him, Jack. Woo. Oh my gosh, right in front of us, right in front of us, right in front of us. Drive. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You're gonna get first shot, ready? Oh my gosh. All right, neutral, neutral, neutral. Send it, send it, send it, send it, because they're right here. Send it. Step to the left, step to the left. Oh my god. They're right here. They're right here. Look at that. Dom camera. Thanks, brother. Oh, I didn't know they were coming right towards us. Yeah, he just jumped out of the water right in front of the boat. Pitch it, pitch it, pitch it. Also, gas. I got it. Jack, Gaff, come here. You he might be done. Let's hope he is. Look at these head shakes. Finally, bro. That fish is, there's no way that fish is done. So you want to step down, Don? Yeah. An opportunity. That's all I was asking for was a freaking opportunity, dude. All right, come on down. And I got it. But he keeps switching sides. Oh, that's what makes me nervous. Oh my gosh, it's a big tuna, dude. Yeah, it's yeah. not small. I'm trying to get shoot out of your way. Shoot this. Jack. Jesus. Dude, I don't want to lose Gaff. He's still green. You're going to have to step down for me. You're good. I'll bring him to you. I think this is the last one. Second gap. No, we're good. You good? You good enough placement? Yep. You need two hands on it? You good? I'm gonna get one, two, three. Let's go! Yes, boy! Let's go! Woo! That's what we're about, baby. Yes, That's what we're about. That's a good fish right there. Bro, we've been asking all freaking day for one shot. That's all I wanted was one freaking shot. Yes, go! baby! Yes, baby! Yes, baby! Woo! Let's go. That's exactly why I bought this setup. 18,000 size Saltiga, Yamaga Blank, 8110. Put the freaking whip into him, baby. Lockdown drag, man. Check that out. Woo! I was so nervous I was going to pull hook because it looked like he grabbed it with his like front teeth when he hit it. I was like, please. Okay, okay. Thanks, everyone, for the help. Stop, All right, boys. So I said, I'm out. All right, baby, out here at the fads, chasing open water tuna. Don't get me wrong, this is no 100, 150 pound fish, but we do have a scale on board. So I'm gonna get this guy cleaned up, bled out, 
get the meat good and cold, get some salt water in there, but man. I don't know if you can see it, but it's zeroed out. Whew. Let's see what this gal weighs. We got any guesses on the boat, boys? I'm a guess. 65. I got 65. I give him 60, like 62. I think he's a little shallower than we think. <sighs> 56. 56. There we go. Oh, I'll get him cleaned up. We're good. We're good. Do what? I'm on. Stick him, stick him, stick him. You on? Yep. I don't know how big he is. Blackfin? No. Uh, it was a big blow up. We're on something back here. Beat him up, Jack. Beat him hold up, on. Jack. Beat hold him on. up, Jack. Hold on. Hold on. Oh. Oh. Easy with the. Holy. Up, up, up. Next one, next one, next one. Jack's on something. Hi, right. Jack. Me and you will do that. You get the gaff, boy. Yeah. This way. Sorry, brother. How big is it, Dom? He's good. He's a good one. Okay. Let me put my boot. All right, Dom. On his first yellow fin. Potential. Potential first yellow fin, baby. It's a good one. Yeah, it is a good one. Blaine doubled up, broke off, unfortunately. But Dom got it right next to the boat, trying to get out of Blaine's way. And it's a dandy, baby. How are we feeling, Don? Pretty good. Are you nervous? Yes. After seeing Blaine just <laughs> well, Mine was so green, it like, it came here and then went straight under the boat. Uh, yeah, yeah, it just like was doing the like weird turn circle things. I haven't even cleaned up. I was been cleaning the boat for the last 10 minutes. So you can see I was halfway through. It looks pretty good up here though. You guys rate my uh, clean job, please. You got me on camera, you got Jack on the wheel, Blaine on the gaff, Dom on the rod. Trying to close out some more sashimi, baby. I mean, there it is. Coming out. There it is. That's yeah, gonna be sporadic. We missed my strike, so I'm glad we got this one. Ooh. Mm. It's a little bit better for fish. If he's mouth hooked, yes. Feels like he's mouth hooked. But definitely, like, I think the rod from, like, my, uh, yeah. the rod helps and then the, the reel helps. Just, like, locking, locking. That's where you're going to be able to put the most pressure to him. Like that. Can we take it out of reverse now? No. Oh. It feels like you're fighting the boat, but I, I promise you it's better. Can someone grab that rubber thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just keep that rod like that. It may not be viral content, but this is really, really fun content to make. Also, like, just chasing these fish all day. Ooh, disgusting. Bye-bye. <laughs> hey, Dom. <laughs> Take it out of reverse. Hey, Dom, <laughs> he's leaving. No, uh, to be honest with you, I think it's helping. <laughs> Get him back, get him back. There you go. That's it, baby. That's it, baby. Just quick pumps. Pop. Trust your line, trust your connections. You tried it. I did? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> me? What's <laughs> the pressure on the Oh, pressure. hey, relax a little bit, relax a little bit, relax a little bit. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I trust my FGs, you're good. Let me know when we're getting close to gas. Um. <laughs> hey, bro, chill out. We're good. <laughs> chill out, chill out, chill out, chill out. I feel like Dylan right now. Yeah, no joke. Also, it's very, very hot out here. Yeah. Very warm. So we got time. Blaine's back here tying up G. Jack, what are you thinking? Are you looking oh. for his mark? <laughs> yeah, I'll just see if I can see his face. No. No, he's, he's, he's just going, he's just dude. He's going straight down. There you go, there you go, there you go. There you go. Beat him up, Dom. Time to turn. When you get these chances to gain, freaking take it. Hey, how's that back feeling? My back doesn't hurt, my arm. 
Oh, he's coming. That's a baby, that's a baby, that's a baby, that's a baby. It's a real smooth. I'm ready. I've got, started my half pitches so I can leave the knot now. I see him, 100 foot down. He's gonna come quick then. Huh? Blaine. He's, he's whooping him. Yeah, ready? You need some water? All right, we're at a 15 minute check in with Dominic. Dominic, I know it's not fun to talk right now, but what do we got? Uh, it's hot. It's hot. You were gaining on him a second ago. Yeah, he just took it all back. He just took it all back. That's all right. You gotta just kind of make up your mind that it's like, this fish will not beat me. I will not lose. There you go. There you go. Here he comes. That's it, Dom! Smooth. Do I need to spin the boat? I need to slide past you when I can. Just for a second. All right. Hold this thing. I want to get sure that. I can't even take my shirt off. Give yourself a rest. And then it's Choke some water. There's water right there. Where? Right and there. That, and this here, right where you're shipping. What you need, Don? Yeah. Nothing. 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 Okay. Nah, I'm dude. having nasty flashbacks. <laughs> like just absolutely freaking just disgusting like Ready? They're probably a back. Back and straight. Good. He's coming just slowly but surely. What you don't want to do is overdo anything or underdo anything. Stay super locked in and super, super, super focused. Just, oh yeah, the old Ryan Mori technique. Get it done. Oh yeah! The knee leverage. The old knee leverage. Embrace the suck. Embrace the suck, that's what it is. If you want to pop for big game tuna, get ready to embrace the suck, my friends. There you go. Oh yeah, Dom's getting it. He's spinning. I'll tell you guys, if you guys are watching at home right now and you're thinking, man, why is this so hard? It can't suck that bad. I promise you. It speaking does. speaking from experience, I've been right here for an hour and a half. It sucks, sucks, sucks. So, everybody get in the comment section right now. Support my man Dom. Yeah, he's spinning the boat. Yep. You're like 50 foot now. Look at the sweat glistening off this man's back. That's a Dom? Yeah, now he's fighting him. Now he's fighting him. Oh my it's on God. the stick bait? Yeah. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Do you remember the stick bait it was? The little one. Oh, that's sick, dude. Watch him, watch him. It's a deep breath. He's gonna go into the boat. My back's done. You're good, you're good. You're good. Just no, deep breath, deep breath. You can't? Right okay, Bl Blaine, go ahead and jump on the wheel. Let's get Jack out, Jack's fresh. That's it, good man. Good man, Dom. It's more about the fish, baby. Hey, it's a big fish. Like, you can feel his, like, his boom, 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 yeah. boom, boom. It's not pop, 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 pop. It's. What's it not again? He popped off. Oh, no. Pulled hook. Straight. Straightened it. Are you Broke. serious? Broke, Broke the freaking it. hook, dude. Wow. Put your hand behind that thing. Wow. Dude, it just broke off on this fish, and this, hold on, focus, is the culprit. Wow. Hook broken. Are you All right, let's serious? get back over there. They're not BKKs. Ah! We are 70 miles offshore today, and it is the afternoon. 
We have been out here all day, mm -hmm. and we have seen tons of yellowfin tuna. That's like an understatement. Yeah. <laughs> it is an extreme understatement. Yeah, guess how many is in the boat? <laughs> Zero. Absolutely none. We have been throwing small stick baits, big stick baits, sinking stick baits, floating, poppers, small poppers, big poppers, everything. We are out on Chris Gomez's boat once again with Blaine's dad holding the camera right now, Mr. Marky Mark. And uh, the crew of four today have struck out. We haven't even gotten yeah. bit. Blaine had one yellowfin in the 40 pound variety-ish roll, Mrs. Bait, that was about it. And we have had them in our laps in schools of oh 50 to 100. You see them? Okay, they're behind us. I got you, I got you, I got you. Let's do it. Just like this, guys. This is, this is, we've got a new game plan though. They, they all right, cut around. Are you coming? Yeah. So what I was gonna say is we've tried chunking. We've tried live baiting. We've tried obviously the poppers and stick baits. So now what I'm gonna do, what we're gonna do is we're going to start live chumming. So we only have about 30 or 40 baits. So we, we have been trying to find these tuna schools, run to them, run them down. Now, I don't, I don't even care what happened. I wanted to get one on the popper, the stick bait, and artificial, but I don't even care anymore. We got the JYG stuff out here right now, trying to drop jigs for tuna. It's been nuts. So we're gonna put a tuna in this freaking boat. We're gonna give it all we have, and that's all we can do. So stay tuned. We've got a we've got a puzzle to figure out. Freebies. Are we ready for gear? Yeah. Put in gear. You want the freebies out? Yeah, I'll get. Sorry. This is what I'm talking about, guys. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. This is absolutely nuts. All right, two live baits at the back. I have to. I have to at least try. Come on, boys. Get bit. Oh, come on. This is nuts, dude. I mean, check this out. Keep letting the baits back. Just keep letting them back. I mean, this is normally, guys, this would be like I throw and it is pretty 70% chance that I'm getting I'm getting tight. <laughs> but today, oh my gosh, dude, it's nuts, bro. Look at this. Just came up. Look at No, 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 no. Not that far. Let's freaking go, dude. Keep him tight, keep him tight. Either a tuna or a bobo. Oh, Yeah, don't don't over push it. Don't over push it. It's only 40. Hold on. Let's just play this guy out. It's only 40, so we can't put too much pressure to him. Looks like we might have tucked one into it. Oh my gosh. So Chris is tight. Yeah, he's taking. Yeah, that's it. That's don't, a don't, yeah, don't over him. Just no rush. Zero, zero, zero rush. Because it's 40 floor, that's light. We had to go down, baby. <laughs> How are we feeling, Chris? Really excited, man. Excited, like just. It's, it's just... been too long of watching Tuna just jump right near the boat for you not to be. At least, at least tight, long, you know? Yeah. That's all we were asking for. Yeah, that's it. Don't don't yeah, don't get impatient. <laughs> you said that's only what pet pound test? 40. 40, 40 floor on the oh, yeah. on the leader, but he's he's not happy. He just went right back down to. Tis no bobo. Ah, I hate that we couldn't get him on stick baits, but maybe later. Right now. Yeah. Right now, this is the one fish we put today. Okay. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> uh, 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 bye bye. No, yeah, he's he's not happy. Manifest man. it. Make it so, baby. Important mid-fight note here. Always throw your trash away. So I've got some extra line here. Don't litter. <laughs> it's not only bad for the ocean, it's also bad for your juju. You won't catch any more fish. Absolutely. You know, I I love y'all's perseverance. I love your ideas and your continuing to pursue. I'm not, I'm not yeah, kidding, man. That's how it gets done, man. Yeah, that, that's what we had to do today. Yeah. It's also tough because we want we're like we're doing the whole like stick bait popper thing, you know. Like so, you invest 
you invest four thousand dollars into popping rods and reels and lures and then you come out here and you're in the setting and you're like look at look how beautiful it is it's blue water there's tuna jump next to the boat and to like put this put this setup back in the rod holder. Yeah. Rethink back, everything. Picking up live bait. Yeah, rethink everything. And it's everything. a situational thing, though. Uh, yeah. You got to play the situation, yeah. Well, what I love what you said was, we don't want to be sitting back at the crib and saying, I wish I would have. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the and biggest so, thing possible. Think about when you're out here and you're chasing fish like this, you have to think about, when I get home, am I going to be upset with myself that we didn't just try one chunk slick and or try one live live bait thing yeah and it's one thing if we ran into just one school we got the poppers out there yeah, and yeah. get a bite but it's like been school after school I, and, and after 12 yeah, yeah. <laughs> for the after past 12, two 12. hours we've been ch just chasing these schools oh, oh, yep. oh, get him get him get him so blaine you can't take chunking out of your repertoire <laughs> you gotta keep it. As much as you hate it, you gotta keep it. Oh, is not a big chunking guy. No, oh, he isn't. Coming up on the surface, up on the surface. Come out of the gunnel. Try to just almost like just lean, lean, lean with him, and then don't gain until he's gone to your, past your right shoulder. So just lean with him now. Lean back, rod tip up, 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 up. Get your left hand, and then now get Now there you go. Ride him out. Make sure to touch the boat. Go on deep. All right, now get ready. Left hand. Hand over on the forward grip, and then lean back, lean back, lean back, lean back, lean back. Rod tip, rod tip, rod tip, rod tip, rod tip. Now go. That's right, just play it out. Just point that rod tip. Point that rod tip. There we go. There we go. Yep. Easy. One, two, three, one, two, three. Oh my gosh. Boys! Look at yes. this. Yes! Go, man! Yes! yes. yes. Bro, congrats. Yes. Awesome. Mr. Mark. Awesome, yes. oh, man. Great job, Chris. Dude. Great job, Blaine, on the helm. That was, I'm Good sorry, work. that was borderline. I should not have reached that deep, but I was like, oh. all right. Let's, let's, he wasn't coming out of Let's in. No, no, I didn't. I thought it was through his mouth. Oh, what a beautiful fish. Yeah, man. What a beautiful fish. Blaine, inside is that Ikijimi kit. Okay. Uh, let's borrow our camera box. You ready? I'm going here, to the left, I'm on your left. Come on, baby, come on. Eat, eat, eat. Oh. Where we at, where we at, where we at? like eight that blew up just right here. <clears throat> I've got the cast on, so we're going to see. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Come on, boys. Oh my God, though. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, boys. Right here, right here, Blaine. Right here. Right here, Billy. That was, I thought I was bit. my mind every time, bro. Yeah, just like that one was like, all right, I, I made it into this. Yeah. Uh, I tried. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to. I'm trying to get it over. <laughs> oh, that's used to work. <laughs> Oh! He just missed my fucking popper, dude! Dude, he he tried to sky through my popper. Oh, they're 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 right here again. Okay, good. I'm on. Alright. Mark! On the popper! Hip it, hip it, hip it, hip it. Put it in your hip if you can. I need that belt if I can get it. Where's the where's the butt? It's right. Or the belt? Yeah, I got it. Yeah, Mr. Great. Mark was just random popping, baby. These guys showed up and he got absolutely freaking piped. It's the flying fish popper, bro. 
Oh, it's got the juju! Oh, shot too, baby. Oh, that's so he sick. Might, he might be dumb like yours, dude. Yeah, he he, you see how he's going down? <laughs> Yeah, and you can, you can high stick those rods. Like, you can play with them. The old Japanese boys. What's our test? Uh, 65, Oh, 60. no, 100. Okay. <laughs> 100. Okay. 65 mainline, 100 pound fluoro. Yeah, you got all the beans. Do you have it all filled, buddy? Yeah, no, I didn't get the blow up or anything. That's all right. It was just so random. Yeah. Getting on there? You can, he might be dumb because you hooked him on spinning gear. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but that's a thing. Yeah, just short Woo, pumps, short pumps like, like that. That's so sick. Where the F shack is my stuff. Oh my god. Here, get in here. He's coming under the boat. Okay, he turned out. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, Dad. Oh my gosh, Dad. Oh, it's over the rear. Oh. I'm at Get on him, get on him, get on him, get on <laughs> you gotta put a second gap in him as quick as possible. Turn the door. Marky Mark! Let's freaking go, dude! <laughs> Look at that Dylan, fish! Go. Dylan, go! I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. Okay. I had to take the shot. You went for the deep gaff and got freaking gun hole, dude. <laughs> I'm a little bruised up tomorrow. Yeah, you, you looked a little surprised, man. Oh, the flying fish popper strikes again, bro. Let's go. I drifted that. I drifted that, Let's baby. Let's go, man. I did. I was like, that blow up was right there. I think I'm right Woo. Oh, my gosh. All right, Holy friends. Cow. All right, friends. Oh, my gosh. Oh no, Mr. Martin! Don't take a pick. Don't take a pick. <laughs> so you'll notice a couple things weird just right off the bat of this episode. One, two separate days that we definitely could have made into two separate videos. Mm -hmm. um, Blade and myself have done a lot of mulling and chewing on that right there, just in general. For mm -hmm. for the future of the episode, kind of where we're going with the channel. Yeah. We want to make less episodes if it means higher quality episodes so we're not talking like we're going to post once a month um, we're going to aim for once a week that's mm -hmm. probably really 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 easy we've been doing twice a week um, and it hasn't been that bad either sometimes it just I, I do the editing for the videos and it just bothers me the quality of content we put out when we're just trying to like get it in and chuck it out and get yeah. it in and chuck it out uh, i would rather take it in kind of like this video make sure it's good Make sure the quality's there. Make sure there's some learning lessons for you guys. The clips are good. And then, you know, when we get to, to get a fish in there, make sure the shots are right and everything's mm -hmm. just kind of wholesome and well. Um, and then this, this, this was a little bit unique too because it's two days and we wanted to make sure that, you know, it's, it's the same topic. It's the same, play. it's literally, we went to the fads both days, yep. chasing open water fish, basically in two scenarios with the guys on the 22 foot sea pro mm -hmm. and then with Chris Gomez on his 30 foot sportsman. And uh, both days were pretty similar. It's one day apart. So we went like on a Monday in the sea pro and we went on a Wednesday in the, it was one day we had like one off day in between yeah. these two days. So it wasn't quite back to back. But um, first thing is obviously you guys hopefully noticed that chasing open water tuna are very hard. Yeah. Um, that's been a known thing, just being able, a lot of guys, the restriction is, is they're trolling most of the time when they're at the fads. Mm -hmm. They're going for, the fads have kind of been known for like a marlin, mahi, yeah. sailfish type of thing. So um, most guys are out there, they've got eight rods in the water plus, and uh, when you see these fish, they pop up for 15 seconds and then they're gone. Mm -hmm. So to do it in general, if you guys want to know how to get on these yellowfin, period, the only thing you can do is you cannot troll unless you get lucky but if you want to chase specifically yellowfin we have kind of done a little bit of tests for you guys but we'll continue to do more tests there's obviously a lot of things to figure out with those fish but the best thing you can do is even if you take a bunch of live bait mm -hmm. you've got to sit out there and just kind of wait 
um, because if you're not careful, you mark fish, you think you're just gonna get the fat, and you're gonna set a bunch of chummies out and set a few baits and you think you're there and then all of a sudden 100 yards away, <clears throat> there's 80 pound tuna busting. You can't pull up two rods and run and get there. Yeah. Sometimes we are sitting and they're 50 yards away and we still can't get to them before- They dive back down. Yeah, they dive back down. Yeah. So, and it's a numbers game. Open water tuna yeah. fishing is a number, pure, like you saw, day one's a perfect example, and I was just talking with Blaine about this, because we've been, this is a discussion, we've been mulling this over mm -hmm. on what to do as well, um, and I think day one in the sea with the guys, I think we nailed it. I think we were good. Yeah. We didn't see as many schools, we didn't have as many opportunities, and the opportunities that we had, it just took, sometimes it just takes, you gotta wait for those fish to cue in on your baits. If you don't have the baits that they have, or they don't have the lures that match the hatch type of thing, you just gotta wait. And we waited, we hooked three fish, we only landed one unfortunately, but it, if we would've went home with three yellowfin tuna, that's it, you know what I mean? I wouldn't even have been, there's no doubt about yeah, it. Yeah, as far as the open water tuna go, that's like yeah, peak day. That's like a peak you, day, like, and I think there's, I think that's a peak day just because a lot of people don't get open water tuna. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you right now, this is a fishery that has been known for a long time and no one has tried to go after these fish consistently. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a huge potential when these yellowfin tuna show up at the fads and in these open water areas, they're not held to a rig. It's what we call yeah. open water tuna. And they're not just holding the fad either. There is, you can come home, if we, if we get it dialed in, which I don't, we just have theories, you can come home with probably 10, 11, 12 tuna, you know, yeah. obviously your limit or whatever it is, but you know, it's, it's something that you can figure out. So one day one went great. Day two, the second day was nuts. That was absolutely yes. ballistic. The amount of chances, the amount of times our stick baits, big stick baits, small stick baits, sinking, floating poppers were in the zone. Yeah. The action Insanity. was crazy, but as far as fishing goes, it was a struggle. Yeah, it was an absolute struggle all day. I would have felt better if we saw three schools mm -hmm. and landed two fish. I would have yeah. felt so much better. It but felt like we were going insane, seeing all these schools and trying different stick bait sizes, different popper sizes, different leader, yeah, yeah. different size leader, all these things, and still weren't getting bit on our artificial setups for the most part. And it was it was frustrating to say the least. That is, yeah, to say the least. I don't like. At some point, I like. I hope you guys can understand. Like seven hours of throwing lures for mm -hmm. fish. And it does, it's a, after three hours of seeing yellowfin tuna, you know, the first couple times your adrenaline's going, you're like, oh my gosh, yeah. get there, get there, get there, this is our shot, oh, okay, it didn't happen. Second school, okay, it's good, it's good, it's, like, it's good. And then like after nine schools, in three and a half hours, four hours, you're just mm -hmm. kinda like, hey, there's some tuna there, man, shape, I'm not gonna eat our bait, you know, whatever, and then like, it's just kinda like, you gotta, you gotta focus in, you gotta mm -hmm. grind. We did try chunking, we got some bobo, we chunked some bobo, um, we didn't, it, the tuna we caught, they only came back with squid and flying fish. Mm -hmm. Like very small flying fish. Tiny, tiny, tiny. Yeah. So the theory we have is if we go back to, the, to to try and get after those fish, we're gonna go back with as low as 20 pound fluorocarbon, 30 pound fluorocarbon, which is, I'm not convinced that going, you know what I mean? Like at some point you can only go so low, like at some mm -hmm. point the line is clear, is clear, is clear. Uh, but. We're gonna go back with 20 and 30 pound fluorocarbon, then we're gonna go back with some jigs, some like- Spoon, like Benita standard spoons. spoons. There yeah. you go, here. And we need them to be kind of dense, so they need at least be three quarters of an ounce-ish. You need to still kind of mm -hmm. get into the range. Uh, ideally, it's at least one ounce. Yeah. Um, and then we're gonna change the hooks to some BKKs, um, signals on the back. Obviously, you saw your hook really matters as well. Yes. Um, Dom Very bought those so. baits off a guy off Instagram. And the baits look good. They walked good. Obviously, they got bit. Mm -hmm. He was just using cheap hooks. So you got to use. I'm telling you right now, the 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 drive and the understanding from us is BKK yeah. is the place to go. Standard. Those hooks have not. Yeah, I had that flying fish popper. Caught my very first yellowfin on a couple years ago, long time ago, on that popper out at the fads. Mm -hmm. And then the only thing I've ever done to that popper is just change the hooks on it. Mm -hmm. And now it's got BKKs I, on them. And as far as anybody we've talked to, it's BKK, and I'm pretty sure VMC, VMC makes is, a really nice trip yeah. hook as well for poppers. Yeah, but if you're not using the VMCs, you're not using the BKKs, like you're, you're risking losing that fish. And that's something that's I think is really, really important mm -hmm. to note about this learning lesson is Don, like love Don to death. He's our camera guy. He, uh, he gets to go offshore with us. He mm -hmm. works for us full time right now for the shark fishing trips. And he just went out with gear that he thought would work. 
used a Chaldea, which is a Japanese BG, on a Protis rod that had a little bit shorter of a boat, but wasn't mint, and you can just see, the leverage is tough to get on that fish. That reel isn't properly like performing at the higher drag numbers, so he's only putting 12 or 13 there, versus you know something like the Certaid yeah. even, can, can put some like, higher drag numbers. As, as far as that setup goes, like the Chaldea with the Protis, that's fine to have on the boat. Yeah, yeah. Be, like if you're doing other things and it's just like tuna come up and you're like, oh, I'll throw at him for a second. But what we're trying to do with the all artificial thing is like, only hooking these fish on artificial that's just not the setup to consistently do yeah yeah exactly yeah i guess that's a good point because that's a, yeah i'm not saying like you have to always go on the boat mm -hmm. with those things but if you're going after big game tuna like some of these things are non-negotiable or you're just going to suffer the consequences mm -hmm. and if you're ready to suffer the consequences think twice because i promise you you do not if you haven't suffered the consequences before i don't think you understand and grasp how much pain you're about to be in yeah. or like how many if you pass the rod i guess and you're good with that then pass the rod every you know whatever get it done but um the yamaga blanks blaine and i have three of them now mm -hmm. um we have them in the in the six power the, the pe6 the pe8 and the pe10 mm -hmm. and they're just that's for different lure varieties they're all eight foot one so a little over eight foot they get your yep. distance and these rods are meant to fight big game tuna my fish was in the boat and six minutes mark's fish is who's in the boat in four minutes and mark mm -hmm. doesn't he's not like an yeah. advanced angler you yeah. know what i mean yeah <laughs> so, so it's the gear doesn't it's matter the, it's the japanese as far as these weird kind of niche things have always been ahead of the u.s like yeah. jigging since the beginning of time yeah, yeah. slow pitch jigging they were the first to do it and then now with the popping you think about these japanese guys that are four foot 11 and 90 pounds they can't not high stick a rod or they just don't have leverage whatsoever yeah and they still need to catch these 200 pound tuna mm -hmm. yeah. along with that um it's important note that we've been fishing tight line braid for a while now i was using 65 pound eight strand on mm -hmm. both of those fish mark oh, it was on the same setup that i caught mine on both of those fish were whipped within five minutes and it was super awesome because you can fish that line with confidence. Yes. Um, that is another thing that's very, very important. Um, Blaine and I, will, we've been talking about doing a whole popping and stick baiting video, walking you guys through our gear, walking you guys through our braid, lure selection, talking about specifics and stuff like that. And you know, basically you need the rod to get the distance. You need the mm -hmm. braid to get the distance. The reel has more of a factor than you realize probably in casting distance as well. Yep. So your reel, rod, and line, casting distance is a big thing for popping. If you're running up on a school of fish, they're 80 yards away. Some people may not be able to reach that. Yeah, if you don't have 15 all yards could be the difference. Like yeah, in, oh, it could exactly. be your reel very specifically that's not allowing you to get that extra yep, 15 yards. You could have everything right except for the reel. Mm -hmm. yep. And then obviously your reel needs to be able to put out you know, 17 pounds of drag pretty comfortably without stressing it for yeah. long periods of time without your drag washers being bad or going bad mid fight. Um, and then you've got to have, you know, your reel seat has to be plastic. Uh, this is another one of those weird things. Everyone wants aluminum reel seats. Mm -hmm. Aluminum reel seats don't mix well with, with uh, some of the real foots that are on these spinning reels. And it's metal versus metal. It doesn't flex. It doesn't move with you. You're not going to break a graphite reel seat. No. You're just not. It's not going to happen. Won't happen ever, ever, especially with spinning gear. Um, so there's just a lot of details um, that we maybe need to do a video on. Uh, we've been talking about it for a while. So if you guys want to see a video going into specifics on this, let us know. But yeah. the next a, time we go out, it will be 20 pound, 30 pound floral. We'll at least be on the boat. And I yeah. think we're going to we'll start out the same way. Yeah. 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 And if we're not, because it, it, it'll change day to day with these fish. Like yeah, one dude. day they'll keep, they could be eating anything that you throw in front of it. And the next day they're feeding on that. Yeah. And it changes school to school. Yeah. I mean, we saw the the day one when we moved to a, a different fad, we got to that fad, those fish mm -hmm. were eating and we, we hooked three mm -hmm. and we spent most of the day at another fad where they weren't eating. They're right yeah. in front of our nose. So um, you just got to keep after it. And that's a, that's a good thing to know is as you guys kind of go into a certain technique even if it's not popping and stick baiting for tuna when you guys figure out a system that works and you've been doing it for years and then you see something different mm -hmm. don't try and reinvent your wheel stick to what you know like we do at shark fishing a lot hey look this is weird this thing's happening nope keep doing exactly what you know works from from you know the data you've gotten over the years and then if you need to tweak one thing for this very specific scenario, mm -hmm. tweak it for a second, but don't change your whole, you know, we're going to bring 20, 30 pound floor out there and we're going to bring some jigs. But I guarantee you the next time we go to Ram Powell in a couple months, we're not, we're not going to have, it. you know what I mean? Like we yeah. might have it, but like, we're not going to be starting off with it. No, so. you, with the tuna, you always want to start off with the biggest 
po- like the biggest yeah. line, whatever whatever it is possible. And then if it like someone one person on the boat switches to like sixty pound fluoro instead of eighty, or and they get bit, then everybody switches to sixty. Yeah. And then if no one's getting bit anymore, some one person try forty, and then like. That's if you eventually, nice if you people. eventually go down to twenty or thirty pound and you get bit, but you break off, you at least know that yeah. they're not eating the big stuff anymore, and it, you, you figure something out. You got to find a balance between yeah. getting bit and you know giving yourself a unfair fighting chance yeah. with those fish. So, and that's why we have multiple popping rods and stick bait combos as well. So I can I can go out with a hundred pound floral on one, and I can go out with forty on the next, and I won't even pick up my forty ever, ever, ever unless we're just not getting bit. Mm-hmm. And that's just that's just something you got. So um, there's so many theories that we have and like so many ideas and concepts that we have that we can't fit it all into that this outro. This yeah. outro has already kind of gone yeah. on for a while, but it's good information. And we, like Dylan said, we will be making a video on our entire outlook on the popping and stick baiting game. Yep, yep. So I guess we'll uh, we'll leave you guys with it. Be looking forward to that video very soon. And then we've got some exciting stuff coming up for you guys next week as well. Another full episode um, that's pretty pretty epic. We've got some podcasts. It's, it's into July now. So mm-hmm. the podcasts are going to start coming back around. Blaine and I got some time to sit down and finally breathe. The shark fishing drips have been insane. And uh, like we mentioned a couple times before, uh, we're going to be gone next month more than we're home. So yeah. bear with us as well on that. Lots of travel stuff coming up, but excited to bring you guys this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys got something out of it. If you did, be sure to give us a thumbs up. Drop a comment below. Share with your friends. And as always, we'll catch you guys next week. You.